everybody, welcome back to another slime tutorial here on the channel. I'm your host Boomer today. This was Cultivation Part 2. Welcome to my kitchen. We're going to spend a brief amount of time on this. And, you know, I'm looking through this part of cultivation. Uh, realistically, the majority of this food, I think, would suit great for somebody who PVPs a lot. Now, there are other things in here that would not necessarily be for PVP. For example, spawning an alley. If you need one, you're going to set up some sort of automatic farm. That would be great. Well, there are other things here. Full healing, extra regeneration, and damage reduction. So maybe lasagna helps with PvP. Chicken Alfredo mac and cheese. I might want to take this if I'm going into the nether. Fire resistance, an extra heart, and some damage resistance. Uh, compressed biscuits. Hey, it launches you in the air. So there are different things that could do different thing, uh, you know, different uh, effects for each one of these. Now, one of these I really like is meatloaf. The only thing that's a bummer with this one is it's going to slow you down a little bit. But, like I said, everyone has different things that you can uh, play around with. And so, figure out what it is that you want to accomplish and craft it. So, for example, um, here, the meatloaf. Let's look at the meatloaf, right? Okay, I need a lot. I need some ketchup. I need eggs, some chopped bread, milk, ground beef, chopped thyme, salt, onion, and mustard. Not quite sure why the times. I guess times okay in meatloaf. It's more of a chicken dish, I believe. But, anyways, so how do we make ketchup? Well, we have to take blended tomato and sugar to make ketchup. So how do I get blended tomato? Tomato, I put it in a blender. It, it, it's that simple, guys. It really doesn't take much to figure it out. Now there are a bunch of different machines, and I've got them all laid out here. And so I'm gonna kind of take you through it. You see this one? This is the boiling pot, so for example, if the recipe called for boiled bananas, I'm going to right click it, and look at that, I have a boiled banana. That's just that simple, okay? Here we have the mashing bowl. If I right click this, I'm going to get mashed bananas. See that? Let's keep going. Alright, here we've got ground banana, right? Pestle and mortar, okay? Here we have the frying pan. So if I want this, guess what? I'm going to get fried bananas. So I'm going to put a banana in. You do have to provide 100 uh, joules for power. Click on it, and there's my fried banana. It, it really is that simple. Now this is just a countertop that I put in just so it would look nice. Okay, here we have the oven, right? So could I bake a banana? Is there an option for a baked banana? Oh my gosh, no, thank you. Baked banana, that would be nasty. All right, grill. Could I grill a banana? Yes, I can grill a banana. What else can I do? Oh, I can slice a banana, right? Okay, so great. Grab my bananas. Got one in my head, apparently. We'll slice a banana. I got my banana sliced. Again, that's just another kitchen counter. All right, here, what do we have? This one is your blender. So there's my blended banana. Look at this one. Here we have, whoops. That's another slicer. Wait a minute, what was this one? Oh, chopped. I'm sorry. This one over here is chopped. So using a knife to chop it. Then we've got the slicer. Okay. Next we have the uh, finishing counter. So I don't think you can finish a banana per se. Nope. And of course I have another countertop. Now what's cool about this, additionally, if you want to change the uh, appearance, hey, look at this. Shift right click and I can change my counter to any one of the kitchen machines that are uh, that have that ability, and I think it's most of them. So I can simply change them all. I think I missed one over here. There we go. Huh. I'm not quite sure what did I do there that's not letting me change it. Well, try from this side. There we go. Okay. So now I have a new countertop. And again, there are other machines that you can use. And I'll tell you on there, right? So, pro, pro tip, shift right click. Hey, boom, 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 and you can continue to change your counter. So for those of you who are very artistic in this game, hey, let it rip, all right? Now, so you ask, how do I get all this stuff, right? How do I get bananas and tomato paste and ketchup and all that stuff, right? Well, what we need to do is get the actual plants. So I'm going to get some of this out of my way. And we get most of this to start with by trading with villagers. So let's go visit my villagers. You have two different villagers. One will give you the bushes, and the other one will give you... Um, hang on, let me get all the way back out of here. Okay, so one will give you the bushes, one will give you the trees. Produce comes from your bushes. Byproducts from the actual 
example. So if I want a blended banana, I put a banana in the blender. It really is intuitive, and I know there's 29 pages, but there's a ton of items, right? Blended cumin, I put cumin in a blender. I'm not sure why you would put cumin in a blender. It's already a dry spice, but this is Minecraft and it doesn't matter. Okay, so to get these bushes, right, we've got 36, 72, 82 different bushes. Well, you get them by trading with a farming villager. So we have three farming villagers set up, and I did trade all the way through to see if I could get more than one trade, and you can't. So, all right, 20 diamonds to get a cucumber cultivation bush from my friend here. This guy, cilantro. This guy, turmeric. So you can get one of the bushes per villager. So clearly, if you want to get all of them, it's going to take you a while to get all 82. But, and it's one trade per, you know, you can get one trade per time you open it up. So you put 20 diamonds in, you get one cucumber plant, you'll get an X, you got to close it out, come back to it, okay? Uh, I don't remember, I didn't go far enough in to see if it times out like other trades do or not, but either way. All right, and then to get the trees, we're going to come over to our other friends over here. Let's go back to get our trees. Let's see, so now we're going to trade with a Fletcher. So I did take this guy deep in, and it's 64 gold ingots to get me a pear tree. This guy happened to have, oops, I hit him, an orange tree, and he's got a lemon tree. Wow, I could make some very interesting orange, lemon, and pear. Huh, could be a nice uh, smoothie there. Anyways, so those are the two villagers that you're going to use to trade. So again, to get all the trees, at least there's only 18 if I remember right. So let's go back. Up oh, 15. So it might not take you as many as it will, obviously, for the bushes. So once you've got those, I traded earlier for some cilantro plants. So let's put it down. Now, I did test a few things because I know I'm going to get questions on these. First question I know I'm going to get, does this work with bone meal? Well, I already know what the answer is, but we'll show you. The answer is no. You cannot bone meal these. No matter what you do, it doesn't work. How about the exotic or the Dynatech growth chamber? Stick it in there and grow it. Does not work. What about course signs from Androids, the advanced farmer? Nope. You are stuck waiting on these one at a time. And this is something I kind of appreciate. Again, you can get these relatively quick. Now, in terms of like eco destruction, there's nothing in the food that's going to destroy an economy, all right? Now, you could set up 82 plants, and when they become fully grown, right-click and run and get it all done at once, and you can harvest them all and let them grow while you're working on other things. So you can still get plenty of production and plenty of time. There's going to be, for once you plant it, there's three growth stages. So that was stage number one. Stage two, it'll look just like at least for this plant, for the cilantro plant, it'll look just like the berry plants inside of Minecraft. Um, I even tried setting the tick speed at 30,000, and it did not speed up the plant. So there is no method that I'm aware of, other than maybe in one of the configs, to change the growth rate. And we know that the plants in, in, that we did in episode one, part one, uh, can be changed in the items YML file. I would assume... The same thing would apply for the bushes and for the trees. All right, so stage one, you saw this is stage this is stage one of growth. This is stage two of growth. There's one more stage. So in the case of cilantro, what you'll see hanging on this plant, in this case, is going to be, I believe it's acacia leaves. You're going to see tiny little acacia leaves on the side of the plants. Now, every plant probably is going to be a little bit different depending on what it is that you're harvesting. Some might be kelp, others could be, you know, any number of different things based on the uh, item that Sefi chose to use to represent that, for example. Uh, let's see, let's pull up the guide. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're fully grown. You see it? There we've got our leaf. Now we can right-click and harvest our cilantro. Plant keeps growing. Now, if you want to pick it up and move it, simply left-click it, move it, put it somewhere else. So... There is no way to duplicate or breed these. Now, the only thing I haven't tried 
was the Dynatech Seed Plucker. So we're going to give that one a try real quick. I couldn't remember everything uh, that could possibly do this. So let's give Boomer a panel. Okay. Uh, let's get the Seed Plucker out here. Let's see. There we go. So this is the only other thing I can think of that could potentially work. So let's see. First, will it work on the cilantro? No. Will it work on the bush? Nope. Okay. So I believe that is every possible scenario of reproducing these plants. So really, you have one option, and that's trading with your villagers. At least once you've got the trade unlocked, you can keep going. Guys, that's pretty much it. Um, the concept is very simple. To get everything in this side, again, would take a while. But making all the foods is, is not hard. And like I said, you can set that kitchen up any way you want. I set it up just to make a giant U. But uh, let me know how their chicken ramen goes. It sounds like it's yummy, at least a little bit. But like I said, you can set this up any own way. You don't have to do it like this. And you can use whatever countertop you want. Um, setting up a villager farm, right? You can still do your normal trades. I'll just show you, like I said, all the other normal vanilla trades are still there. It appears when you first access the villager after he's been uh, assigned a workstation. So, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, dude, get out of the scene. I do appreciate you being here. Anyways, uh, don't forget, guys, when you're playing, it's not fun. You got to go, Boomer, or you got to go home. We'll see you later.